and that's a that's a lot of snow so this is iced up this metal roof um it's like it yesterday it melted a little bit and slid down and then just iced over so i got the gutters are so iced up i won't i can't even really strap it to the gutter um this is just all ice here might be completely out of my mind working on this roof today but sun's out i'm gonna try sweeping it a little bit and see how that goes yeah that'll work i'll do this i'm gonna i'm gonna get up here a bit on safety i always recommend being secured with fall protection when you're on a roof and m even more so always always strap off your ladder i will not get on a ladder unless it's strapped off i don't want to be like a bad example to people about like hey i saw i saw this solar guy he totally did this and then you get hurt doing it um don't do anything you're not comfortable with if you got a pit in your stomach about it or something don't do it and like always try to be safe fall protection strapping your ladder off all that kind of stuff well i've been on the roof uh sam's been over here working on the wall all right so today we're putting in three inverters five batteries and we also got a transfer switch we're putting in a bunch of gutters over here as you can see outside the gutters meet up with the two inch outside Right now we're going to unbox all these, the rest of these batteries and get them all set up. We'll set you guys up on a time lapse and kind of let you guys see what we're doing. So in this time lapse video, Sam and I are setting up five of these LG batteries. This is the 16H Prime from LG. And before you start complaining, I know a lot of people don't like Solar Edge and a lot of people don't like LG, but I do. I think they make a really slick product. You basically have a bottom mount, you have two battery packs, you have the top portion, and you have a hand, handful of screws, and then you can DC couple these LG batteries to these solar edge inverters. So when you're looking at it, it's really an easy, simple setup, and you have 80 kilowatt hours of storage, and then you have the slick solar edge system with the power optimizers and everything like that. I think this product is really good and it goes together pretty smoothly. So if you need to give it a second chance, give it a second chance. But well, this is one of my preferred um, battery solutions for grid tied hybrid systems that are out right now. Well, that's it for today. We had to run to the supply shop, get a bunch of parts and different things, but basically got the five batteries um, set up, um, ready for conduit runs, ready for wiring and all that. So we're gonna do the last bit of chase ways we need to. Uh, for running one inch and then some uh, conduit bodies uh, on the side of these batteries it's not too crazy kind of look close together but i kind of like the look as well so that's done um didn't end up getting any panels up on the roof it was just sun came out water melted a little bit of the ice um, that i'd shoveled down and then it got cold and it just froze and it's just slick up there so tomorrow I'm gonna to be setting up the ladder and uh, setting up uh, those panels. It's like nine o'clock at night, it's freezing cold out here, but um, before I go to work tomorrow, I got some ribbon, um, so I got some ribbon, I got a wreath, and I got some light up candy canes. And I wanted to decorate the truck, make it look like some kind of like Christmas tree present thing have like the candy canes all lit up and stuff when I roll up to work tomorrow. But the cool thing about this is I'm gonna be rigging it to the off-grid system so that the wreaths are lit up. Might not be able to have time to do it tonight. We're gonna to rig that to the off-grid system. So I'm driving the wreaths lit up the candy canes. Candy canes are red, but I'm putting them like on the tailgate. It's gonna be cool. turned out better than I could ever expect it. <laughs> Christmas lights and candy canes are riding good. The bows look like they're getting torn to shreds. I'm just looking at the rear view mirror. Um, but I kind of wanted it to look like a little bit thrashed. It's just a little funnier factor to it. But uh, got all that done. I'm headed uh, Tuesday morning, headed to the job site. It's going to be the only like day that's above like 35 degrees. It might not be too icy. And so I'm going to try and get as many panels up today. So I still have 53, 33, I have 33 panels um, to get up. I have uh, like 27 on already of 60, and I'm going to try and set as many of those as possible, maybe all of them. Might be possible to solo set all of them, 
switch on that roof in these conditions is just fucking ridiculous uh, to try to do, but I'm gonna try to get it done just because I'm wanting to finish up this job this week um, and get some other stuff done. So we'll see you at the job site. Dude, just cleared the snow off and it's still a little icy. Sun's coming out. Gonna melt everything off. But I'm gonna use a good old soda trick. Oh, I see a lot of people on social media when I do this comment that it's not good for the roof. Nice. I can see where they're coming from. But in this situation, I'm doing a small area and it's gonna snow all week and get it rinsed off. But yeah, I, I can see in dry areas. If you just leave it on, it stays on there forever. Yeah. Damn, that's sick. Alpine's a cool area. I don't know if you can see that, but a oh, hot air balloon is so cool. Okay, all right, let's do this. I'm installing these new panels. They're the new REC Alphas uh, Pure. They're like 420 watts and they're pretty, they're pretty sick. So what I like about them is I think they eliminated lead and cadmium um, and boron, I think. Just all the harmful chemicals during the doping process of the cells to make their product more recyclable. Um, but they also have a, I guess what people have called it, like an, a heterogential cell. Uh, essentially, the, the solar panel has a lower temperature coefficient, so it performs better in high temperatures, which is going to be really good for this roof. Um, how hot that metal roof is going to go get, this will produce more electricity. I can go over the specs a little bit more, but I'm going to go ahead and unbox this pallet and show you show you these panels. So the, the first thing that's interesting about these solar panels is the leads are coming up right here, which is actually... It was good and bad. So I'm able to basically cut this one and then run it up on the frame right here. And then I have the optimizers on the rail positioned right here so I can feed them both into it and it's kind of going in good. The negative things about it is I'm using hidden end clamps and those end clamps will actually hit this junction box and hit these crossbars. So if you're doing something crazy like triple rail or you're you're using hidden name clamps, you got to be very careful about the positioning of your rails because you might hit these. And then the other option would be to flip the first panel the other direction and move the MLP over if you follow what I'm saying, but you still run into issues with the supports. Um, the other thing I don't like, I don't like these thin frame panels because I feel like when you're coiling up MC4s and stuff and there's an MLP right here, it's too much stuff right here and it puts back pressure on the gr glass, which I've actually seen, not these panels, but I've seen some panels pop when you tighten them down. The, little, the glass will actually shatter because there's so much pressure behind the glass, which you might just need to manage your wires different, but one thing that I don't love about them, but other than that, like... On paper, these panels are sick. They're like 68 inches tall, only like 44 inches wide. Um, a really good overall uh, product. So let's get some of these on the roof. Oh yeah. And it looks look nice. See the bus bar at the top? A lot of dead space right there in the bus bar. These panels look clean. Uh, stack's getting smaller. This is... Uh, uh, panel number 15, so I'm halfway done on this roof. I'm 75% done on the solar panels. I'm gonna take this last panel up. I'm beat and uh, just do this last one and then check out what Sam's got going on uh, with the wiring in the garage. Last panel for the day. It's popped in there and there. Curl that up. Room to put my hand temporarily. These frames are so thin, the 30 millimeter. I can barely get my hand in there. All right, let's go. And transition from the ladder to the roof. Uh, I'm gonna take the solar panel, push it over my head. 
a little, little rough. I'm just gonna drag it. I'm feckin' tired. So this might look a little ugly, but I'm just gonna drag her. All right, let's slide it down. Okay. Let's plug this in. Loop it through there. This all to kind of lay down nicely right there is the plan. I'm just gonna loop it in like this. Not the best wire management, but I want everything to just kind of be loose and free, but not touching the roof. That's actually lining up pretty good. Pretty good there. Okay. I'm gonna try to hike the panel up a little bit. Tap it down. I like, I don't know. It's tight there. It's really hard to keep these rows straight and lined up on a row of 10 like this. Get that one temporarily tightened down. It's the sketchy part. Try to position my foot right there and reach. I don't think I have any more clamps on me. Oh, I got one, I got more. Clamp this guy down too. It's just temporarily, so. I'll, I'll kind of leave it like this for today. Um, and then the plan is, is I'll finish wiring up the home runs to the junction box, pull wire to both sides, um, and then run this whole row, all 10, cut flush, then add uh, the three more on here, cut it flush, and then add those two last, and then um, make sure that all those are tight. But I'll probably need to harness up and over, it's gonna be a shit show, but that's yeah, halfway done. Wednesday morning, um, I got uh, 15 more panels on the east side, I got three panels on the back side. I'm going to be running a little bit of conduit and pulling wire from the roof over to the three inverters so essentially i have six rows of 10. so what i'm going to do is just put two rows of 10 um the you know 420 watts of panels um on a string each row of 10 is its own string and i have six strings going down the inverter inverters get two strings each so pretty simple but i made that overly complicated so i'm going to be pulling all those wires through one inch conduit uh, ran some on the back side of this meter most of it was done by the builder goes through the wall to a junction box so i'm hoping that i can get the wire pulled all the panels on and maybe start to get things fired up today so we'll see how it goes been wiring up all day in the garage running around getting parts i just finally got um circuits pulled um through the attic and then to the junction box so i'm going to be making up a junction box right now kind of wiring this all together and then wiring up the inverters um i got a new i got a new tool that i really like um it's made by ideal um it's like a bunch of crimp tool um and it's pretty it's pretty cool it goes like that and crimps on a little like barrel and then there's a cap for it and that's what I'm going to be using to transition from PV wire to that uh, dual rated THA can but they have a little cap cover on it and then they have this little ferrule uh, that goes over the wires so I've noticed with solar the majority of my service calls come down to solar panel systems not working because of bad connections on the roof. I went into all the major electrical supply companies near me and they all sold the uh, like the the bunch of the crimps and the caps. But they didn't sell the tool and the tool was twice the cost as what I bought it online. Um, so if you're doing these, try them out. Just give it a shot. It's not crazy expensive and I think it'll save you like the like 50% of failures will 
literally be eliminated with this. But I'm gonna throw on some songs. I'm gonna throw some of these together, wire it up real quick and do that. So it's, it's Thursday. It's been a rough week. It's been below freezing every day. It's been real snowy and foggy and just frosty and slick and everything. And it's been pushing back this project, kind of making it take twice as long, but I'm just gonna work harder. Yeah. We're gonna try to work smarter and just get it done regardless of what's going on, so. Climbing up the ladder with a few of the last solar panels on this east side. There's an east and a west face um, to the solar install and then, you know, six rows of 10. But the GoPro does something called horizon leveling where it tries to make the ground look flat and even. And this gives you an angle of just how ridiculous this roof is, um, being a 12-12 metal roof. Got a couple panels left. It's getting late. Gonna head out for the day. Um, had some other electricians doing some electrical in the house and uh, we're kind of working over top of them. And we had to wait for them to get their shit done before we could get ours done and ended up being that we just didn't get our shit done and they got their shit done. So gonna be back tomorrow to kind of wrap up. Went and did the tie-in today at the main panel and then turned on the system and got it all up and running. I do have a couple solar panels uh, left kind of on the bottom corner over there. That I still need to install, um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and install those later uh, once it gets a little less slick and less icy. It's pretty treacherous doing those end ones. Um, and then sliding down that roof after, especially solo. So, system's on. This was one hell of an install in one hell of a week.